Whew. Hi. <laughs> um, I shouldn't shout. I keep forgetting that I've got this new lapel mic. It's actually not new. I bought it at the beginning of lockdown. But that is how bad I've been at uploading videos. That the, the microphone still feels like it's new. Um, sorry about that. But there's a small little matter of a new TV show which I mentioned uh, two videos ago, hence the TV in the background. I was trying to figure out how I can um, set it to remind me of my own TV show. <laughs> yeah, um, you'd be surprised to know that I actually do not like watching myself on TV. Um, the YouTube videos, I edit them myself, but I also do not like watching myself on video. Um, I think it's one of the curses that comes with being a perfectionist. But yeah, um, anyway, I digress. Welcome to the Pizzaing with Les Chef. Today is a quick one, unlike my last video, which was the Wine 101 video, where I went on and on and on and on and on <laughs> for nearly an hour. <laughs> But the reception I'm getting for that um, wine video is positive. People enjoyed it and they understand why the detail and why it is so long. But today we are doing fish. Um, 101, uh, and this is a quick one because I'm literally making lunch for myself. I'm looking at it right there behind the camera. Um, it is a, a whole fish. People go into supermarkets and they see a whole fish and they get intimidated because most of us grew up, especially if you grew up um, in landlocked um, towns and landlocked um, cities, you are used to getting frozen fish fillets. Um, there's a famous um, brand in South Africa, I won't mention the name, but a lot of us grew up with those frozen fillets and that's how we thought, okay, fish comes like that, easy peasy, no need to stress about fish. And then you walk into supermarkets these days, which is all about serving you and selling you fresh things. And you see a whole array of prawns and seafood and um, fish and a whole lot of things. And people, unfortunately, do not understand how to cook them. Hence, they carry on walking past them, uh, which is a heartbreak because it's actually cheaper for you to buy from a fishmonger or buy a whole fish rather than buying um, filleted fish and frozen fish. Also in terms of um, nutrients and health-wise and flavor and texture, it's better to buy fresh. And um, this is why I'm doing this video, to show you how you can turn a whole fish into fillet. Uh, I normally would have just put it on the braai outside and just put it there. I love seafood on the braai, but today I thought, okay, let me show you how you fillet it and how you can grill it yourself at home. Um, this is 101, literally these are the things that you learn at chef school in the very beginning. And that is why I'm showcasing them now. Um, some tips when it comes to fish. How do you tell if fish is fresh? The smell. Fish, ironically, does not smell fishy. Fish, fish does not smell fishy. It smells like the ocean it came from or the river it came from. That is how you know if a fish is fresh. If you live near the coast or near a river, you are lucky enough to be able to get that kind. In Johannesburg, where I'm from, a landlocked city, I think someone said it is the biggest landlocked city in the world in terms of um, yeah, economy and stuff like that. Uh, but we actually ironically get the best fish up here in Joburg from the rest of the country because of our buying power and our economy. Um, when I was in Cape Town shooting for my book, Dijo, I was speaking to one of the fishermen and they told me, actually, ironically, the quality of fish up in Joburg is better than the stuff they're selling down there because of this thing. Um, we have the buying power and we can pay a higher premium without asking questions. Um, that is why most of the fish caught is literally flown up in the morning up to Joburg, fresh as it is. So that myth of um, living in a landlocked city, meaning you get um, bad fish, is not true. We actually get quality fish up here in Joburg. But the trick is to figure out what is the quality fish. So fish, I was going to actually hold it up here in front of camera, but I know there's people who are, <laughs> who are squeamish, and I didn't like the idea of just sitting here with the whole fish in my hands. Um, but I'll explain it when I start to um, portion it and show you what to do with fish. But whole fish does not smell fishy. 
it smells like the ocean. So that fishy smell actually comes from the bacteria that is on the skin of the fish. So the older a fish gets, the stronger that smell gets. That is how you know a fish is old, when it's got a very strong fishy smell. Then you know, I run fishy. Um, that is when you know, okay, this fish is old. It should smell fresh without any smell of any of that um, bacteria. Um, the other trick, you can not do this actually in a supermarket. Ask them for one of their gloves. They've all got sanitary gloves because they're not allowed to handle fish or fresh produce without wearing gloves. You ask them for a glove and you put the glove on and you literally poke your finger. Not too hard. You're not stabbing the damn thing. <laughs> you take your finger and you press it gently. I'll use my palm for demonstration. You press it gently and with your palm you'll notice that it springs up. That is exactly the same thing you're looking for with fish. You want the flesh to spring up immediately. If you press it and the skin stays indented, so you can see where you pressed your finger, that means your fish is old. So a fresh fish has firm flesh. It springs back immediately. The other thing with um, fresh fish to tell the difference is to look at the eyes. The eyes tell it all. Um, literally, as soon as a fish is caught, it starts to die and the eye starts to glaze over. Um, for the first three days, the eye will be clear like a marble. It will also be round. So if you look against the surface of the fish, you'll see the eye is perfectly round like a marble and you can see through the eye. Um, if it's an older fish, the marble and the eye has gone gray. Uh, and also gets this white dot in the middle of it, which becomes bigger and bigger. That is an old fish. You do not want to buy that. So what fishmongers do, the shady ones, they chop the head of the fish off. So now you've got um, just the tail and the body of the fish, so you can't tell with the head. But by doing that, you can't chop off the gills though, which is another telltale sign. Um, the gills of a fish, when the fish is fresh, will tell you how fresh the fish is. So once again, put the glove on and lift the, the gills up. It will depend on the type of fish it is, but the gills shouldn't be a brown color. They should be vibrant looking like bright colors. If it's a purple or a red, um, it will be a very bright red or a bright purple. It shouldn't be brown. It shouldn't be um, one of those yeah, but like I said, it depends on the fish. But the majority of fish will have very bright colored gills. And also um, the fins and the tail of the fish are also important. What they tend to do, if the fish is very old, the fins start to break apart. So you start seeing the bones of the, um, the fin instead of the actual whole fin. So what they do is chop them off. Um, so once they start mutilating the body or the carcass, or whatever it is of the fish, um, that's when you need to start asking questions. Your fish should be whole, complete, um, even with the scales on. That's another thing. If the scales are still on and you've still got your glove on, you roll your, your hand against the grain. So not the way the scales flow, but against the direction that the scales flow. If as you roll your hand or slide your hand on it, the scales start to break off, your fish is old. Fresh fish, the scales are firm as hell. I know because that is how we clean them. Um, and when it's a fresh fish, it's hell to clean because the scales go everywhere. They pop everywhere. If it's an old fish, you just wah, scrape it once and all the scales go into the sink. That's how you know if a fish is old. I got this fish already clean because I'm lazy. It's locked down. I'm not in the mood. Um, I know the fishmonger um, and he knows me. So I told him clean the fish for me. So I'm not going to show you how to clean a fish. The innards have been removed as well. And he's gone and removed the dorsal fins. The dorsal fins are the ones on the side. Um, yeah, when your fish is lying flat, those are the fins you see on the side. So he's removed that as well. Ideally, what I prefer is to have a whole fish, all the fins and all the scales. But yeah, I'm lazy. Eh? Your lockdown has got me... <laughs> on another type of lazy but I'm going to show you the whole fish though and we'll show you how you fillet it and how you cook it quickly it's not a recipe it's just a 101 on fish um, all you're going to need is butter garlic some sea salt and lemon um, anything else you can add after as I said it's not a dish this is just me showing you how you cook fish 101 without making it too long okay this is a silver's fish it sounds weird um, that a fish will just be called silver 
without a name behind it. Um, but literally, when you go to a fishmonger's, on the nameplate it will be written Silver's Fish. Um, normally, it will have a fin over here, and it will have a fin over here, and it will have smaller fins down here, and the back fin. But my fishmonger went and removed all of that, which is annoying because they actually help you grip better. Um, but yeah, it is what it is. And as I mentioned, um, it's been descaled, so there's no scales on it. And you need a very sharp knife. So to check how sharp a knife is, you literally, your hands across the um, blade. And the stronger they grip onto your fingerprint is how you tell how sharp a knife is. Um, that is the simplified way. There are other ways, but that is a simplified way. This is a brand new knife. I haven't used it um, that much. I've only used it for about a week. So it should be still sharp enough. But if you're using a blunt knife for a fish, then you're in trouble. You're going to need a brand new knife. As I mentioned earlier, the eyes are clear. That's how you tell if a fish is clear. Um, is not clear. If a fish is uh, fresh. And they should have a bubble. This one doesn't have the bubble anymore because I bought it three days ago. But the eye is still clear, it hasn't grayed over. So it's still relatively fresh. Um, yeah. So the first thing you want to do when you're going to fillet a fish, you start at the back, you make an incision. Okay. And the incision stops at the bone. Um, I can't bend it right now because then you um, don't mess up the fish. And once you've made that incision, you take your knife along the back and into the fish. And you want to avoid doing that a lot. What you want is a smooth motion. Um, that is why I say you need a fish fish. Um, and you also need a sharp knife. With a blunt knife, you won't get the smooth motion going. And you try only do it twice. And you want to just lean against the, um, the bones that are in the middle of the fish and that is what your knife balances on and as soon as your knife stops going through it means you've reached the bones that are here some fish have this bone others do not so it depends on the type of fish you have okay so you see how deep i've gone in this one literally that was just three strokes with the knife then you flip it over to the other end at the very back as well this one is a bit trickier. You won't get a smoother motion as you did on the other side. And you want to avoid the fish rib cage. So you'll see me lifting the fish up. It's because I'm trying to avoid the rib cage. And then you get your knife. And normally it will be behind this fin. So if it was a whole fish, there'll be a fin right there. And your knife goes right through you pull that across and now a few more slices this is that drip cage I was talking about and this is why you need a sharp knife and boom you have a fillet of fish so you're probably wondering, that doesn't look like what I get in the box. That's because it's cleaned. So this part will be cut off and then any funny stray bits are cut off. Anything that looks funny or off will be taken off. But this is a fillet of fish. And what you want to do now is take your clean hand and you run your fingers across the flesh looking for sharp bones you won't get all the bones out unfortunately um, with salmon though what we tend to do is use tweezers um, and then we'll actually literally sit and pick the bones out but because i'm making this for myself i really don't mind those bones i'll look out for them and all the bones are along here there won't be any bones here there won't be any bones there they're all along here with um, the silver fish okay and that is how you fillet a fish that is a fish fillet then on the other side to get to do that one properly what you're going to have to do 
is chop the head off behind the dorsal fin get rid of the head uh, if you're someone who loves cooking don't throw the head of a fish away that is where most of the flavor is so use it to make fish stock and to make um, fish sauces same story on the other end make an incision sharp knife please be careful and you go along the edge of the fish so you try to have one smooth motion I'm not using a fish knife you get different types of knives this is just a yeah it's not a fish knife this one um, because I can't being the genius I, I am find my bloody chef knife bag uh, I think someone who used to work with me has it actually but anyway I'll just replace it so same story incision on the other end there are different ways of doing this there are different ways of filleting a fish this is the way I was taught and this is the way I've been doing for well a decade now I am not a fishmonger I'm just a humble chef so same story along the rib cage this is the rib cage you want to avoid that because there are many bones in there ah okay that is some of the dorsal fin okay so there you go this is what you're left with and yeah ideally you shouldn't chuck it away you should use it to make sauces and soups and things like that or you can just freeze it put it in a bag and freeze it and this is all you get from a fish so if you ever wonder why is fish so expensive why is salmon so expensive from a whole salmon this is literally the only parts that are going to be sold and the rest will probably get to be processed and used for other things but these are the expensive parts okay so this is the silver's fillet let me show you how you cook it actually before we get to the cooking what I'm going to do is make an incision a sharp incision three stages on either one of the fillets what this does okay this one I'll make four so what that does when you grill your fish have you ever noticed when you grill fish it starts to curl up on one end you always want to start your fish cooking from the skin side down but to avoid it curling on one end you make these incisions and these incisions also help you with um, um, cooking the fish faster it also helps excuse me it also helps you with making the skin crispier so after I've made the incisions you take sea salt or desert salt and you just put it on the top of the skin what this is going to do is absorb all the moisture that is in the skin with fish what you want is a crispy skin you do not want it to be soggy so salt absorbs all the moisture in the skin um, besides flavoring your fish it takes it all out and it means your skin will be crispier let it sit for maybe five minutes i'm going to wipe it down just before i fry it um, which is going to be in a few seconds now okay on to the cooking of the fish now um, the fish has been sitting for about five minutes what you want to do is grab some clean paper towel and you wipe down all that salt yes it might seem like a waste but at least salt is not that expensive you want to get as much of that salt off remember the goal of the salt was just to get the skin dry and then you you pat that fish down make sure it's dry all the salt is gone same thing on the other one brush off all that salt and then using the dry side of your paper towel you make sure the skin is dry okay and then get your pan on get your pan hot that is on the maximum heat this is our butter get some of that in there be generous with the butter don't be shy and then your lemon I'm gonna slice it for later put that aside 
and in here is garlic not too much um, garlic burns on a high heat so you don't want to put too much in there it's just to flavor the butter okay get that hot get the pan nicely coated let that sit until it is piping piping hot do not put your fish on when it's still medium or cool you want to always work on a high heat this is a non-stick pan if you don't have a non-stick pan this will still work you just have to be a bit more careful with um, the heat though um, just try add a, maybe a little bit of canola oil that might help the fish from not sticking you hear it sizzling that is when your fish is ready always away from you you place it down same thing away from you place it down and now you can season this side I'm going to use some of the salt that is left over from brushing it off not too much if it's a fresh fish you don't want to overwhelm the flavors of the fish with too many spices and too many additives and too many other things you want the flavor of the fish to be the champion of um, the dish little squeeze of lemon juice in there 